we may now have a disaster on our hands. There are multiple players from this year's Prism Football whose autographs may be fake and may not be authenticated by PSA. What is this going to mean for football cards in the sports card hobby? We'll debate next. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode of Cards on the Table, Doug Teapot. I wish there were better circumstances to be discussing today, but there's not. We've got a significant, potentially real significant problem in the hobby. One of the premier releases, Prism Football, of course, one of the biggest football card releases of the year may contain fake autos of some very key players. And we're gonna go to a little show and tell here to set this episode up. So we're gonna bring this up on our screen and I got a printout for you. This is an Anthony Richardson autograph card out of Prism Football, a card that you would be thrilled to pull if you pulled that card, one of the biggest hits in the product. But PSA would not authenticate that autograph as real. They said that they have questions about it, that there are multiple variations of Anthony Richardson's yeah. auto and they would not authenticate it. So I'm going to ask you guys, is that a real auto or not? Here, I'm bringing this up on the <laughs> screen, are a couple of Anthony Richardson autograph items that I know he signed because these items are mine. Okay. These items were signed in Gainesville, Florida when he was with the Florida Gators, Mealy Pop Shops in Gainesville, Florida. Jamil, a great card shop down there. He, has, he had Anthony Richardson personally sign these for me, so I know they're real in person. Look at those two autos. Yeah. Do you think they're signed by the same person? I do not. Uh, I am not at all qualified. Um, no forensic sort of analysis and, and handwriting. However, I see that in your examples, he dots his eye. Doesn't do it on the prism card. Nope. His A's are also very rounded on the yep. prism card, and they come to a point on on yours. Um, so that's all I got for you. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, at the all, last but... name too. How he did his <laughs> yeah. initials and his last name. The last name yeah, looks true. looks different. Quite a bit different. To it me. looks a lot different. But you know, again, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just saying stuff. Yeah, and we're not obviously qualified to do autograph authentication. But if I was a worker at PSA and I was looking at this, I would start to ask questions as well. Sure. And this is this does not. It doesn't look great. By the way, that rejected Anthony Richardson autograph that was shared by John Ban 237 on X. What's interesting is PSA has authenticated a number of Anthony Richardson autographs, including this one I'm bringing up on the screen now. This one they authenticated actually kind of looks like the one that they now have rejected. This one was from uh, Fire Rips, a breaker. So I, ah, gosh, I don't know what's going on here. They may be, there may be a lot of fake Anthony Richardson autographs out on the market, but it's not just Anthony Richardson. Uh, somebody else on, on X, Single Malt 25, pointed out that Dorian Thompson Robinson has extremely different looking autos on different of his cards from Prism. From the, from, from the same set, his autos look dramatically different. That's on the screen as well. Guys, is this history repeating itself? This happened with Dak Prescott, an auto pen controversy. His rookie year, back in 2016, what do we make of this? Does this hurt Prism? Does this hurt the hobby? Teapot, I'm going to start with you today. Jeff, I hear Stephen A. Smith again in my ear like a little Kevin Hart on those Phillies cards. He's sitting like a little devil on my shoulder, and I can hear him, and he's saying, this is despicable. This is disgraceful. This is reprehensible, and it is abhorrent. All the, all the different buzzwords. Here we are. Just your average working man spending our hard-earned money, just $850 <laughs> on a Prism hobby box, hoping for a little slice of the real deal, some authentic gator ink. Yes. And it's fake. It's fake. These cards, they say that the autographs are guaranteed, or for that matter, the player or game-worn relics, guaranteed. It by does Panini say America. that on the back of the card. Guaranteed by the manufacturer. Guaranteed, Jeff. So what happens when it turns out to be false? How can they guarantee this if it's a stack of sticker labels yeah. sent through the mail to somebody? They don't even be there watching them do this. They don't know if it's Lulu's mom signing the autographs or who's doing it. And Jeff, what happens when a company guarantees something yeah. and then it breaks or it fails or you don't like it? You get your money back. Yeah. Are these people getting their money back? I probably doubt it. Yeah. 
Yeah, these are, these are all scary things. And of course, we don't know for sure if they're fake. PSA hasn't definitively said they're fake. PSA just has said, there are some big questions here. We've got concerns and we're not going to authenticate them. My opinion is they're fake. Looking at the side-by-sides there of the stuff that I know Anthony Richards had signed. But Doug, how, how big of a problem is this? How concerned should we be about this? We're already missing some of the biggest yeah. quarterback autos out of yep. this set. Are you telling me the the biggest ones remaining might not be real? Um, that's that's awful. I mean, that for you know a flagship product like Prism, that's that's terrible. Um, you know, at the same time, I look at these and like I said earlier, jokingly that I pointed out the differences. But if you made me sign a, a thousand of something. The first one is going to look a lot different than the last one, probably. I'm going to start taking shortcuts. It's going to degrade over time as my arm gets tired. I don't know. Who's the expert here? Who's to say that, you know, by the end of this, he wasn't just going through the motions and, and, and throwing out some bad autos? Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure that their experts, you know, can, can tell a little bit better than I can. But I'm hoping that the determination at the end of all of this is that, uh, okay, maybe they're authentic. Because PSA still hasn't said for sure, right? Like, right. I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, maybe the, the wires are crossed here. Now, the Dorian Thompson Robinson one looks terrible. That one looks crazy, That looks night it? and day. You know, that looks like he like, probably how, had a couple of different people helping him sign. Uh, they're yeah. not even close. How does somebody's signature change that much? Yeah. That one, the, the, that one's not just because Dorian Thompson Robinson got tired right. signing. That's a completely, it's completely different completely different. Completely different. Uh, you know, we've seen it before. We've seen it with Dak. We've, we've seen the allegations of Lulu and his mom, right, uh, with Luka Doncic. Uh, and there's been there's others uh, as well that have been reported to have the same kind of issue. Yeah. Um, I think it just impacts this product a little more because yeah. we are missing other huge autos out of this. There's and other quarterbacks that we don't have, right. which makes these kind of the bigger chases. And if they're not legit, then that's just for the whole product. Is, you know. it is Anthony Richardson. I believe he's the biggest autograph he's the big, in the product, In my opinion, right? yeah, he's the biggest because autograph. Because C.J. Stroud wasn't, doesn't have autographs right. in prison because he's exclusive with Tops and Fanatics. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Young also exclusive with Thompson Fanatics. I believe Will Levis, also yeah. exclusive with Thompson Fanatics. So that leaves Anthony Richardson as the highest drafted quarterback, yeah. the guy who everybody wants, and he had some flashes of, of yeah. good play last season. People are going to be excited about him going into this season. This is one of the flagship products. Yeah. We got to have real autographs. I mean, it's really, really, in my opinion, is a disaster for the product if these autographs are fake. But also, this guy sneezes and he throws his shoulder out. So maybe he's just, you know, in a sling going through the motions here. There's all kinds of explanations. I'm sure they're totally legit. Oh, man, what, what, a, what a story this is going to be. Obviously, guys, we're going to track this for you here as, as developments of this story uh, continue on. But, man, it is... It is not great for the sports card hobby, that is for sure. There are some better things going on in the sports card world right now. Another is that PWCC, once again, has an unbelievable weekly auction. This one may be un- unbelievable more than almost any other. They got some fire cards in there. Uh, one of my personal favorites, they have a 1988 Fleer All-Star Michael Jordan PSA 10, which is pretty rare on that card. I think a population of a little over 300 one of my favorite Michael Jordan cards of all time, and that is in the weekly auction right now. Teapot, you you chose a card this week that's an absolute banger that's yep. in the weekly auction. Don't need to worry about whether the Lulu is real or not because there's no auto. It's just his true gold prism to 10. That's crazy. True gold prism to 10. In, in PWCC's weekly, weekly auction? Weekly, yeah. Big. That's, that's crazy. It's a huge card. So wow. I'm excited to see what that goes for. Wow. What do you have your eye on, Doug? So for me... Last week, I bid on 66 items on PWCC's weekly auctions. I only won three, so I don't want to tell you guys anything. I don't want to tell you what I'm bidding on at all, but I really like a 2018 National Treasures Shea Gilgis mm. Alexander Logo Man out of five. Um, no auto, just rookie patch, but the Logo Man patch, Shea rookie, um, you know, that's one of my favorite players, so i got to go with that. Maybe a future MVP right there. All of Could these be. items, yeah, all of these items and, and, you know, tons more are available in PWCC's weekly auction this week, and there's going to be a link down in the show notes below to take you to that weekly auction, so make sure to check that out and bid on some of these items. Okay, guys. Data Dive, Teapot, very popular video you did this last weekend. You were saying this is your last chance to buy some cards of some of the baseball prospects who might get called up this season yep. before their, their prices start to rise. And you also talked about how there's actually kind of a very clear pattern 
throughout, you know, uh, the history of baseball cards where some money is to be made here. Talk to us about that pattern and also some of the guys you have your eyes on. Yeah, so it's kind of the closing window now, I think, to get in on some of the top prospects anyway. We pretty much know at this point that Jackson Churio is going to be on the opening day roster for the Brewers. Holiday probably will get called up sometime within the first few months. People are projecting Wyatt Langford maybe a little later. But those are the top guys amongst the hitters right now. And it's probably the last window before their prices might go up another level. Now, remains to be seen. We've seen this in the past. I've been talking about this for a while, that when players get their call up, that tends to be the high point and then a fall off. If people are now anticipating the call up, Maybe now is the high point, maybe not, who knows. But I kind of just broke down some of those top 20 hitting prospects, where their prices have been over the last 90 to 180 days, and showed those top tier guys and said, if this is your game, you know, you probably got two weeks left, three weeks left, and then things will sort of sunset from there. Yeah, that's good. That's good advice. I have my eye in particular this year on the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. I think you could see something somewhat historic here with the young talent on the Orioles. So last year you had Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson. You had, you know, rookies, like young players, uh, ending up in the top 10 of American League MVP voting. Both of them did. Yeah, Gunnar won. Yeah, yeah. And they, and, and I mean, you're talking about really early career guys here with many great years ahead of them. Both of those guys on the same team, in the same lineup, and then this season, you might add Jackson. Well, you will probably add Jackson Holiday into that lineup. And they made the playoffs last year. They exited early, but they made the playoffs. Now you've got three yeah. perennial stars all within their first couple of years, all in the same lineup for the same yeah. team. They've got that, a few other guys, too. Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. That's not a setup that you see very often. And so that's a – I think that's going to be really exciting to watch. And I think all of those guys – may get extra attention this year kind of feeding off of one another it could help boost the card prices of all of them so i like jackson holiday for sure uh and i I don't mind looking back to adley rutschman and gunner henderson and and see you know see what they can do this year and and what that group can do together i think that's going to be exciting doug i know you're not a big baseball prospector no do you have any prospects you got an eye on maybe it's not even baseball yeah jackson holiday and gunner henderson not gunner's not really a prospect anymore but i did i did just buy a handful of jackson holiday bowman first refractors um i don't play around in that that area very much with baseball prospecting it's just not my niche but they were i got some really good prices on them couldn't pass it up now i'm really hoping he ends up as a starting shortstop or second baseman for the orioles at some point uh very soon I'm jealous of you guys being able to prospect on baseball. It just doesn't work the same way for football and basketball, where I, you know, tend to, to to dabble the most. I miss I miss Prism coming out at the beginning of the season yeah. is what I miss. Back before COVID, when yeah. October releases for yeah. you know for, for for basketball and a little bit earlier for football, I really miss being able to get in there and buy up a bunch of key rookies that I believed in before they actually showed their stuff. Now everybody knows what's what when a product by the time yeah. a product comes out, so I miss that. I'm really hoping that maybe Bowman Chrome U fills that void for basketball and football, so I can start you know you know taking my prospecting talents and and, and actually getting some benefit out of that. But, yeah, for, for baseball, I, I'm with you, full Orioles right now. Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, hopefully you guys are, are in agreement out there. Hey, guys, we got a massive announcement I need to tell you about right now. This weekend here at Cards HQ, Saturday is Topps Rip Night and Trade Day, and it is getting even bigger because we have confirmed that Chipper Jones, the Atlanta legend Chipper Jones, will be here in our store at Cards HQ around 3 o'clock on Saturday. We are extending the hours of our trade day. We're, we're going to start it at 2 p.m. for the top strip night and trade day and go all the way till 10 p.m. We got Chipper Jones around 3 p.m. here in Atlanta at Cards HQ. And then we also have a high level musical celebrity who's going to be coming a little bit later in the day, probably around 6 p.m. We may have some other special guests arriving as well. It's going to be a big event if you are anywhere in the Southeast United States, or heck, even beyond. Get to Atlanta Saturday at Cards HQ starting at 2 p.m. And even if you can't make it, you can join our breaks that we're doing on Whatnot and our live sales that we're doing on Whatnot all day long on Saturday, the Cards HQ shop account and the Cards HQ breaks account on Whatnot. Those will be fun ones for you guys to follow as well. Okay, guys, let's get into our mailbag topics today. First up, 
So, you know, Top Series 1 Baseball 2024 has been out for a couple of weeks now, and there's kind of more cards being discovered, more, more I, I guess you could call them gimmicks or Easter eggs or whatever you want to call them that Tops has put in this product. So, for example, they have these cards with little Kevin Hearts. You referenced that earlier. Those cards, I believe, are numbered to 52. They're Phillies players exclusively with little Kevin Hart on the cards. You've also got these first cards, which is the first card ever printed of a base card. And considering these base cards, you know, there might be yeah. 900,000 of them printed. That's like, oh, that's another one of one, essentially. That's not being labeled as a one of one, but it's being labeled as the first card. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. We've also found out that you've got cards of Juan Soto and Shohei Otani in their new team uniforms that are super short prints in the product. All of these things, kind of all of this information kind of came out after the release of the product. What do we think of all these different things that have been added to the product? Is this just gimmicky or, or does this make the product even more desirable and cool? What do you think, Doug? I like it as a whole. I, I like, I've been pretty critical of a lot of the gimmicks, if you want to call it that, that Fanatics and Tops have put forward recently. I'll be very critical of them going forward. I think the Kevin Hart thing's really dumb. I, I would never want that on my card. And I, I can't stand it. But as a whole, I, I like that they're doing things. I like that they're introducing new gimmicks and new wrinkles and being innovative and seeing what works and what doesn't. It's going to take some trial and error to kind of, you know, kind of find their path there. But I'm glad that they're doing things, right? I've been critical of the individual stuff, but I do want to say that as a whole, I, I'm glad to see some things shaking up. I really like the first card. I think that's really cool to introduce somewhat of a one of one of a base card in this. Um, I think that that'll be a desirable chase for people, and it's just fun. Why why not? This is a product that's at a lower price point, yeah. that's highly printed, that's kind of available for everyone. Have more fun with it. Yeah, yeah. You see, I I like to go along the lines of what you say. I like they're trying things. I also like that they're not taking themselves too seriously with this product. Right. Like if they started doing, if they started having mini mini Kevin Hart's and Diamond Icons or Dynasty, people might get a little upset. Let's not do that. But in Series 1, I actually love it. I actually love that they've added the Kevin Hart cards and that they've done all these things. I think it's hilarious, and I think, I think Series 1 is the appropriate product to do it in. Teapot, do you agree, or do you think this is a disaster? I thought the Kevin Hart thing was pretty funny, and they look funny, and I saw the little clip of Ruben calling Kevin Hart, and he's like, why am I so small? And he's like, no, it's you. Like, it's the size of you. It was a funny exchange. Um, so I love it. I love Easter eggs. I like that they've actually made like the golden mirror image variations stand out more. You're not trying to read a code. And those are, you know, you got the gold back and they say SSP and all that stuff on the back. So those stand out more. And now you still have some Easter eggs that show up that maybe you don't know anything about. And that's probably even gonna cut down for good or for bad on the print run or the, the circulated print run even more, the circulated number of copies because people won't know they necessarily have them. I've gotta go back and look to see if I pulled that Soto or Otani card because from what I've heard, they're just showing up in the normal sequence. Mm -hmm. They're not like in the middle of the pack like other hits by the rainbow foils and the other inserts. They can be anywhere in the pack and I don't know that they're necessarily even turned around. So I gotta go back and look at the hobby box I ripped and see if I happen to hit one of those. But in general, I like it. You know, we had that 2007 uh, Topps Derek Jeter card and it had like a cutout in the stands of President George uh, W. Bush and Mickey Mantle like in the dugout in the background. People like that card. That's another kind of gimmicky thing. I think it's really exciting, um, and I, I love what they're doing. I do too. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna rip some more series one this weekend here at Cards HQ and see if I hit any of those cards. Cards I would love to hit, but haven't yet. C.J. Stroud, Victor Webinyama. I've ripped Prism. I've ripped Prism. Doug and I ripped Prism basketball this week. I've ripped Prism football. Haven't hit C.J. Stroud. Haven't hit Victor Webinyama. Would love to hit those cards. One of our viewers. On our last episode, left a comment, left a message on our Instagram and said, which of these two do you think is the better investment? Or is there another player who you would be investing in from 2023? I'm going to start with you, Doug. Great. I'm glad you started with me because we did an episode of release day where we did prism football. Yeah. And I pulled a purple eye CJ you Stroud. You pulled one. And I didn't win release day. You pulled day. one. No. No, I, you, you gave it just like everything else. You gave it to, to somebody else. You gave it, what was it, like a... What was the, it? Was one a, of one, a one Tony of one. Romo. A to, one of one, Tony card. Romo. That's right. Yeah, beat my 
four thousand dollars. Yeah, the CJ Strouds are doing pretty well it's like in the, the secondary market. The time you're John Mechie beat the, 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 Hutchinson. The CJ, I, I will concede. <laughs> at, at, in retrospect, I will concede the CJ Stroud is is you know maybe worth a little more at this moment. This is a really tough thing for me to decide between Stroud and and Wimbenyama. They're they're both obviously the top of their class. On one hand, you've got you know football is just hotter than basketball right now, so you can look at that. Um, you can look at the fact that he has more individual and team success, uh, Stroud, uh, right now. You can talk about how seven foot six guys don't play very long careers, which you may be ready to talk about. I know you've mentioned that in the past, but I don't think that any single player in football can Im impact their entire team like a single player in basketball can. I think an all time high level, great basketball player can carry four guys and win a championship. I don't know that one quarterback can do that in football. Uh, also, you have Stroud going up, up against a, an all-time great in Mahomes. That's gonna, he's going to live in the shadow of Mahomes. No matter how good he is, he's got one of the best to ever do it playing with him right now. Whereas Wimby, I guess you could say LeBron is you know, in that same conversation, but he's on the very tail end of his career yep. and not a guy who's going to overshadow him. He's more competing with like a Giannis or a Luka as far as modern, you know, current uh, greats. But I think I, I'm going to go with Wimby. Um, I just think he's got a little bit more going for him and that he has a better path to championships and MVPs. I'm glad you came around to the right answer. You started off, you, you were worrying me at the beginning there. I could the be Stroud's convinced. Could Anybody in the comments could, the right could talk me to one side or the other. You, you on the same page, Teapot? Yeah, uh, so Stroud's fantastic, but it was one season. He got hurt for part of it. We've seen rookie QB shine before. Baker Mayfield had a great rookie season. Uh, technically, Stroud's rookie season was one of the best in NFL history. Yeah but not when you compare it to Patrick Mahomes' first full season, which was his second year when he threw for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns. And that's the problem. Stroud has to face not only Mahomes in the AFC, but he's got Burrow, he's got Herbert, he's got Allen, he's got Lamar, he's got other guys coming up who he's got to overcome. Trevor Lawrence, if he ends up playing well again. Wemby needs to stop shooting jump shots. He's atrocious, the worst in the NBA at jump shots, honestly. He needs to play more like Giannis and less like KD, but he's here. He is absolutely incredible. Barring injury, he's a total game changer. Uh, there is a video by uh, Jimmy High Roller, who does some of the best data storytelling on YouTube that everybody needs to go watch about Wemby. Fantastic. He kind of really sold me on it. Outside of those two guys, somebody sneaky right now is maybe Brandon Miller, who yeah, yeah. is scoring 24 a game on really good shooting over the last month, who's turning on the second half of the season like Trey did in his rookie year. I think he's somebody to keep an eye on. All right, there you go. You heard it from these folks first. There you go. All right, I like the opinion. If you've got questions for us next week, make sure to let us know by leaving comments in the YouTube video. And guys, hope to see you here at Cards HQ this Saturday. And if you can't be here, make sure to check out our WhatNot streams, which will be live on Saturday. Cards HQ breaks and Cards HQ shop, where you will get a taste of all of the action. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon in the next one. Take care.